saw the book, you know, she she really went crazy. And <laughs> Dad, you don't That's know anything about this. <laughs> yes. She hey, snatched it out keepers. of your hands. She did. She snatched it out of my hand. Code Keepers, we have Daniel, and I'm going to have him pronounce his last name because I might mess it up. I think it's Shumsky. Is it Shumsky? Okay, good. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. We have Daniel Shumsky who's in with us today for Get On Code. And as you know, our code is empowerment. And I know you're saying, Seiko, what does this book have to do with empowerment? Stay tuned. All right. Welcome to Get On Code, the Fly Guy Show, which is a series of melanated conversations focused on empowerment, health, wealth, and knowledge of self. People think in binary choices because they are conditioned to. And on the wall was a picture of a wolf and a lion. I think the wolf was the Democratic Party, the lion was the Republicans. But the drug trade and all these illegal stuff that uh, people do, that's still economics. It's just that they couldn't do it in a traditional system. We're talking about melanated wealth. So we can build wealth, but we just, for some reason, don't seem to be able to transfer it. You had a great experience. Fine, that means nothing. What were you told as a child about education? You had to be how many times better? Every impression without an expression becomes depression. Hey, Code Keepers, we're back with another great episode with Get On Code, and look what I have. Look what I have. It says perfection in the bag, and that's a cooking technique, I believe. But I actually think it's perfection in this book. I tell you, some of these uh, man, recipes, <laughs> can you see this? Can you see this? this? This is just beautiful. Steakhouse sirloin with mushroom sauce. Man, <laughs> yeah, and look, my favorite one, my favorite one, this, this is the one I had little tabs on, was the uh, Korean style short ribs. Korean style short. Now, I know you're saying, hey, I can't see the picture very well. What that means is that you need to buy the book. <laughs> you need to buy the book. Pick up the book. And we have the author of said book here with us. Hey, Daniel, pronounce your last name and then uh, tell us about uh, tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. So the last name is Shumsky. And thank you for showing the book. Um, I'm a, a former journalist turned cookbook author. And so this is my fourth book. My last book was about the Instant Pot, that pressure cooker thing that people were going crazy for maybe four or five years ago. And uh, this is another really cool cooking technique that I wanted to show people how to take advantage of. And so I wrote how to sous vide. How to sous vide. So and you mentioned that you wrote four other books. How to Instant Pot was one, Will It Waffle? That sounds intriguing. And then uh, your, your newest book, the one that we're really excited about, How to Sous Vide. That, that's beautiful. Uh, Will It Waffle? <laughs> that book was a ton of fun. It feels like uh, it, it was so long ago for me now. But man, that book was so much fun. And, you know, there's something about waffles that just kind of uh, it's hard to take yourself too seriously when you're talking about waffles. It's just the word itself is fun. And, uh, you know, the cooking was a ton of fun, too. So that was a, that was a fantastic start. Um, and I'm, you know, it's one of these things where uh, the, the path has led me to uh, another book and then this book, too. Um, and it, it all comes down right now to this uh, How to Sous Vide book for me. Beautiful. Well, I love the recipes in the book. And so the question <laughs> that most of our code keepers are saying is like, hey, what's this have to do with empowerment? And I think the best part of this answer was brought to be my my, my wife. <laughs> now, I mentioned earlier, as soon as the book came, you know, as soon as it came from Amazon, my daughter picked it up and said, hey, what's in this? Unwrapped it, said, hey, no, you, you can't keep this, Dad. I'm the chef in the house. You got you to gotta let me have this. My daughter's on her way to uh, culinary arts school to be a baker chef, chef baker. A baker. Okay, <laughs> a <Yeah>. baker. Sure. <laughs> To make money for the family. She's going <laughs> to, you, you know, she's going to use this uh, experience and this education, similar to you, Daniel, to monetize it so they can improve, so she can improve her family. You know, she doesn't have children yet, but at some point she will. Uh, tell us about your family. 
Well, I think one thing you're onto is that uh, cooking can be super empowering and not just for yourself, but, but it can be a way of sharing that with other people, whether it's friends or family or, you know, I'm super privileged in that I get to share it with a bunch of people. Um, by writing these books and kind of putting them out there into the world, right? So that for me is super exciting to, to be able to teach people something and to give them a tool to, to, to share with other people. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm cooking for my family. My daughter is our, is our chef and you're helping create other chefs. Um, and, and so you've been a reporter or a, a journalist, <laughs> You're an author of four books, this being one of the best and newest, um, and you're a chef. So how have these different experiences empowered you and improved your life? Well, it's really interesting because, um, you know, I, I came out of high school and then I went to college and I thought to myself, oh, I want to be a, a journalist and that's all I ever really want to do. And it was, you know, it was super interesting work and it was super important to me, but um life just didn't work out that way uh it wasn't meant to be for the for the long haul and um i was really fortunate and that i sort of you know believe it or not i sort of fell into writing cookbooks um i was just in the right place at the right time and i and i ran into the right people and um it, it's something that's just kind of snowballed from there you know Hmm. You know, it, it's interesting, you know, life will al allow you to have different routes. And it's interesting how one choice really opens up a lot of different pathways. And that's part of that self empowerment that we focus on, on the Get On Code show is, you know, that one choice can lead you down many different pathways. In your case, Daniel, a journalist, an author, uh, a best selling author, I might add, claps to that. All right. And a chef that teaches people how to provide and bring love in a culinary form to their family. Um, yeah, it's exciting for me because, you know, even when I was doing journalism full time and it was, you know, it was pretty uh, hard news stuff, you know, political corruption and all this kind of stuff. Um, I always had personal interest in cooking. I just didn't know that it would be part of my profession to to write about it and to share it with others. And so the, when, when that opportunity opened itself up, that was hugely exciting to me. And it still is, you know? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Do you miss anything from, uh, uh, from your time as a journalist? Well, I do, but, um, you know, I do a lot. But one of the interesting things that I feel like life has taught me is that, uh, you know, I have things I miss about journalism, let's say, but the world has also moved on. Journalism in general is in a different place from when I left it 10 years ago. And we don't have to get into all that just to say that my job doesn't exist anymore. So whether I wanted it or not, it's not there for me to have anymore. So I was sort of forced to reinvent myself. And I was just tremendously fortunate that I had, um, you know, it wasn't even a plan B. It was just something else that I enjoyed. And then I realized, hey, you know, there is a way to, uh, to make this into a career. And then so I just kind of pivoted in that direction. Wow. And you pivoted into authorship. And into yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I put myself out there as a blogger. I mean, this is, you know, going back more than 10 years. Um, and uh, uh, an editor at my publishing house, um, I mean, at the place that is now my publishing house, and she was a stranger at the time, she came across my blog and she sent me an email and said, hey, how would you like to write a book? And I thought, I think I would like that. Thank you very much. And, you know, because of the stuff I had done in the past, I actually have the tools to make that happen. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a saying about luck is preparation meeting opportunity. And your experiences, your preparation, and your passion all came together in an email simply say, hey, would you like to write a book? And this is book number four. Um, That's right. And so now you've monetized your passion. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when I think about it, it's a little bit unbelievable. 
And, um, you know, I've talked about it with friends and colleagues and um, a bunch of us worry about the fact that the opportunities are not equally available. And while that is true, one of the things that I've come away with from this whole experience is that sometimes it only takes one person. It takes one single connection. And now how do you find that one connection? That's not easy, okay? That can be difficult, but it can just take one connection. And so there is, I think, some power in, in knowing that. You don't need to you know, uh, connect with a million people. It's really only a question of the one right person. Wow, that's, that's such a great business message because many of us who have dreams and aspirations to fall and follow your footsteps, uh, or like, I don't know where to get started, but what's your story so far, just so far, and I'm sure the deeper we get into the weeds, the more roses we're going to find. Your story so far simply says that I took the opportunities that were given to me. I learned and I became a master in my craft as a journalist. You know, um, I, I was always doing some cooking and enjoyed it. And I was able to bring those things. So when that opportunity presented itself, Code Keepers, Take your talent and develop it. I have a, an, an innate belief, and it, not to get too religious, but I believe that uh, the Almighty, by whatever term or concept you want to use when you deal with the, uh, the deity, uh, the Almighty provides you with talents and interests that will help you out of any problem that you will face in life. And you mentioned, Daniel, that your career, your, your career line, your, that job, that just above broke, just over broke, yeah, <laughs> that job, J-O-B, came to an end. But because of the other things that you had done in preparation, a career developed. That's beautiful, yeah. man. That's exactly right. And it really does, uh, you know, it makes my head spin sometimes. It's not like... Uh, it's not like I could see it all happening at the time or that I even had the confidence myself to say like, oh, well, if I just follow this path, you know, in five or 10 years, it'll go someplace good. I didn't know that. Right. I mean, I was just doing what I could to keep my head above water at the time. Um, <laughs> but, you know, ultimately good things came with it. Uh, hopefully. This uh, if it's not a bestseller as of today, it's going to be <laughs> very soon. I mean, you're a best-selling author. So, uh, you know, success leaves clues. Tell us a little bit about that experience as a best-selling author. And, you know, Code Keepers, we want you to go ahead and get your food on. You know, get your foodie on. Pick up the book, How to Sous Vide. Uh, and some great recipes in here. The, and uh, like I said, my favorite one was, and I, I lost the page because, oh, Simply perfect lamb chops. Now, you can't read it too well, which means you got to get the book. But simply perfect lamb chops. <laughs> simply perfect. You can't get more, you know, more better, more better. <laughs> it's simply perfect. Um, what was that experience like being a best-selling author? Uh, well, you know, I mean, it's exciting. It's humbling. As I said before, it kind of makes my head spin sometimes. But I think, uh, you know, you've got to also tell yourself that you didn't get here alone. You know, whether it's my mom, whether it's my, uh, my partner, my friends, all this kind of stuff. Um, the people who supported me when I was growing up. I mean, you know, it, it, it's, it's because of me to some extent that I am where I am, but it's not entirely down to me, right? <laughs> Understood. Hey, having great family members, partners, friends, family, children, uh, neighbors, <laughs> you know, all yeah. of the above makes life worth cooking for. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, the thing is, like, you know, let's take as an assumption the idea that I had it within me to do this. I mean, that's all well and good. But at the same time, I can use all the help I can get. Right. So, right, uh, right, you right. know, if people, if people are, uh, you know, pushing me in one direction or, or that kind of thing, or, you know, giving me an opportunity, then I'm going to, I'm going to want to take it. All right. That's great. And as you can hear in the background, the phones are starting to ring off. <laughs> They're trying to order this newest book. <laughs> 
how to sous vide, well, you don't have to call. You can just go on Amazon, go to your local bookstore. Um, you can find it all over the web, actually. If you type in how to sous vide, you'll be surprised on how many leads, and all roads lead to Daniel. So, uh, <laughs> one of the things that I really like about this particular manifesto, I'm going to call it a manifesto, <laughs> is it's helped people feel more capable in their kitchens. Now, one of the areas that we really focus on in empowerment is making sure that everyone feels empowered enough to take life into their own hands, to take your nutritional needs into your own capable hands. And one of the great things about books like this, and we can dare say, you know, cookbooks in general, although I can't really call this a cookbook. You know, it's, it's, it's more than a cookbook, a traditional cookbook, you know. You've helped people feel more capable in the kitchen. What type of response have you gotten? Because it wasn't just this book, you know, with Instapot, Will It Waffle, and now How You Sous Vide. You've helped people feel more capable in their kitchen. What type of responses are you getting from your readers? Well, I tell you, one of the um, most exciting and rewarding responses has been the people who tell me that their kids got into cooking because of Will It Waffle, for example. Um, because, you know, it's a fun, approachable uh, technique. It's hard to be, I think, too intimidated by a waffle iron. And so um, a lot of people, a ton of people have told me that it got their kids into cooking, which is super exciting. And then, you know, it goes right up uh, to adults where I also hear from adults who said like, oh, you know, I, I wasn't sure what to do and this kind of thing. Um, but your book really helped clear it up for me. And that's that's just super rewarding to hear. Beautiful. Tell us a little bit about some of the recipes that we'll find here. Maybe your favorite recipe, uh, you know, maybe a story about, you know, pork chops with apple cider syrup. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell us that so, story. Yeah, right. Well, so I think, you know, you'll understand if I say that it's hard to pick favorites, but I, I will tell you that there are over a hundred recipes in the book and we're talking everything from, um, you know, meat, poultry, lamb, duck, uh, to eggs, to vegetables. And then of course the, the book finishes with a chapter on dessert. So it's a really wide range of, uh, of recipes. Uh, Truly, truly. Are there any vegetarian or vegan friendly recipes in a book? Look, I saw the lamb chops and I saw the Korean beef steak and I was sold. That <laughs> I kind of got stuck there. Right. Uh, well, so sous vide is a technique that is most often associated with meat. But I think I've made pretty clear in the book that there are definitely a lot of options um, beyond that. So, for example, like I said, uh, there are egg recipes in there and there are dessert recipes. There are some, there's a carrot recipe and asparagus recipe. Um, so it, it goes beyond just, um, your, you know, your basic average steak. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I have a couple of capstone questions that we often, that we always ask on the get on code show. And I'd like to hit you with a couple of them and just to get you a, a deeper understanding of who Daniel is. Uh, one of the things that I find is that people who are successful, like yourself, do things very differently than the generations that preceded them. And so I'm going to give you a second to think about it. But the question is, you know, what have you intentionally done different than previous generations to make a better life? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the thing that occurs to me uh, in the first place is just that um, I'm the first generation in my family to go to college and get a bachelor's degree. So that for me right there is, is probably the big one. It's not that my, you know, that my mom or that my grandparents didn't value education. They did. They just didn't have the same opportunity. And so I think that's got to be the big one there. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and rock the credentials, man. What school did you attend? Look at, let's shout out to college. Uh, I went to Northwestern University in uh, Evanston, Illinois. Okay. Shout out to Illinois. I know it's kind of cold out there right now. <laughs> 
Yeah, my daughter just went to visit her partner out in Chicago, and uh, okay, she she's like, Dad, it's cold out here. <laughs> the worst hasn't even started. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Ooh. All right, here's here's the second capstone question. You know, what is something that you're uber passionate about that needs to change in the world? Uh, I think opportunity needs to be more equally available. Um, I think that. Uh, it's not right that where you grow up or, uh, you know, who your parents were should determine so much of your future. Well stated. Well stated. Um, in your work as a journalist and as an author, have you come across people who just didn't have the same opportunities? And how did that impact you? Um. You know, I think um, certainly as a journalist, I did. Um, one of the things that's interesting when you get to this point in your career is I think it's a little bit uh, self-selecting. It's a little bit that you're surrounded by the same kinds of people, maybe the people who have also been afforded the same kinds of opportunities. And that doesn't mean that they all look like you necessarily or sound like you. But it does mean that the backgrounds start to get a little more similar. And that doesn't always have to be bad, but you've got to really be careful because it can definitely become that bad. Well, you know what? I wouldn't want to enjoy a meal that was just made out of yeast. <laughs> yeah, it takes a bunch of ingredients, right? That's right. Right, 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 right. And, and furthermore, I wouldn't want to have a all-meat feast now i've had that in the past <laughs> it didn't right. work out too well <laughs> i've learned to be healthy i need to have some vegetables i need to have some fruits i need to have water uh i can have a little wine <laughs> you know right. I, I but i need to have a smorgasbord of things to make sure that my body is healthy and that i think you're saying that we need to make sure that we include the full diversity of the opportunity and personalities that are here so we can have a more fuller, more healthier life? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And, you know, it's also uh, about balance. Um, so whether that's um, the publishing industry or, um, you know, the restaurant industry or just your own life, I think balance is super important. I mean, you know, I've been doing these interviews and people ask me like, oh, you write all these recipes, you know, how do you stay healthy? Well, my answer is that it's about balance. You know, it's like you said, you, you can't just eat meat for every meal. Uh, you need to throw some vegetables in there and you need to have a little bit of activity in your life and this sort of thing, right? So can you have a glass of wine? Absolutely. I mean, I certainly do. But um, there needs to be balance there, too. Well, I just received permission to have a glass of wine. So, Daniel, <laughs> I thank you. <laughs> I thank you. But let's talk about uh, the reason that we got together today, which is your beautiful manifesto. I said the word again. I mean it. It's a great but It's bigger than a recipe book. This is not your grandma and grandpa's recipe book. This is it, just not. All right. Um, how does sous vide? Um, what is sous vide? Uh, how and what? I guess the thing that I'm kind of wondering is with a name like sous vide, what are the cultural and uh, historical roots of this technique? Okay, that's a great question. So, uh, sous vide cooking started out as a cooking technique used in high end restaurants. And so, like a lot of high end cooking historically, the term comes from the French. Now, what's happened is that, you know, again, this goes back maybe 20 years, but as time has gone on, the technique has become more available to home cooks too. And so that's why the book exists now. And that's why I'm super excited to share the technique because it's now, uh, you know, it's, it's something that started out uh, at fancy places, but is, is now available to people at home. Beautiful. You're helping change lives. You're helping people gain confidence, gain capabilities, and these capabilities and confidences that uh, confidence that a person gains by following the recipes and the guides and how to sous vide can really translate into helping them change other parts of their lives. Uh, and, and I guess I'm just really glad I got a chance to 
talk with somebody who's been so accomplished. So Code Keepers, we Code Keepers, we've been hanging out and learning and earning, and uh, also going to start cooking with some of these recipes from the good brother Daniel, author of How to Sous Vide. This is his fourth book, and so Code Keepers, just keep in mind that you find something you're passionate about and you. You place it out in the world so that others can learn, earn, and grow from it. As he's done. Four books, four manifestos, four guides. You know, people are better people because of some of the books that he's written. And you'll be a better person uh, when everyone that comes home to your household can come home to some good cooking. So, Daniel, last words, man. Anything you want to leave with the Code Keepers and with anyone who may get a chance to enjoy this great discussion well i just want to say you know thank you uh for for the attention to the book and uh you can buy it online or in person wherever you buy books really it's just a question of asking or searching for how to sous vide all right well how to sous vide and interesting I'm, when i saw sous vide i was thinking french you know france and it started in a restaurants here in the united states you know, uh, I think in the States, yeah, maybe a little bit in France, too. But the point is, honestly, it's gone way beyond that now, right? It's it's way more extensive, way more inclusive uh, in cuisine. So it may have had some French origins, but we're way past that now. Well, it has a French name. <laughs> I guess it may have had an American or influenced origin, kind of like French fries. <laughs> <laughs> right. And is that the worst thing to be associated with French fries? I don't know. Sounds sounds okay to me. I love French fries. Had some yesterday. Um, they're there really go. good with cocktail sauce. <laughs> yeah. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, friends and family, pick up the book. Your kitchen will thank you. Daniel, thank you for hanging out with us. And everyone else, learn how to sous vide. Peace and prosperity.